What is going on, Garage Couple fans? Happy Sunday, excited for this week's episode. On this week's episode, we are cooling down the Jeep. I hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. This white Jeep is coming to an end. We still have a couple more episodes on it, including some lighting upgrades, some heavy duty control arm upgrades, that kind of thing. But on this week's episode, we discuss a mod that is incredibly important, especially if your Jeep or vehicle does not have AC. Now, this is also perfect for people that like to camp, people who have tents, and people who live in vans or travel in vans that hold van life movement. Now, we have been using this for just over one month now, and we wanted to have some time under our belt before we gave our final impression on this device. We are gonna review both the pros and the cons of this device because it's not all hunky-dory. Nothing usually is. There are some cons as well as some pros, but maybe perhaps this is something that you could use. I mean, it's certainly something that we have been enjoying. You know what, why don't we just jump right in? Let me explain to you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, the good, bad, and the... Ugly. Ugly. All right, let's walk you through the product first. So why don't you hit that subscribe button to catch all the rest of the episodes. As soon as we're done with this white TJ, we are actually gonna start with that LJ over there, that blue TJ Unlimited. One of the first things we're gonna do is actually a lift kit. We are so, so excited about that. Oh yeah. So this is the Zero Breeze Mark II portable air conditioning system. It weighs about 17 pounds on its own, and that over there is the battery that comes with it that gives it three hours of battery life on high or six hours of battery life on low. Now this thing swivels up and down and has a digital display of output temperature we will show you guys. And then there are these soft touch buttons on the top. This is the power button, and this adjusts the fan speed with the blue LED indicator here. You got the light mode so that the front acts as a mini flashlight or night light. You also have the sleep mode, which has a timer function. We have AC. We have turbo mode here, which is the strongest mode. This is the three hours on full charge. And this is the fan. So this is the battery that comes with the device. That thing is actually massive. It's an 840 watt hour battery that allows this thing to run up to six hours on sleep mode or three hours on high. It comes with two longer pieces of tubing one shorter piece of tubing, a battery connector, as well as a charger. Now that this device is compatible with both 120 volt and 240 volt systems, which is super nice. It also has two connections, one for the front, one for the rear, so that you're able to connect the hose to the front and to the rear. Now this tube over here is the condenser release tube. This is where all the water that it pulls out of the air gets released. I don't think I'm ever gonna use that just because it adds to, it removes from the portability portability factor so no thank you to that and we ha actually haven't had any issues but if you live in somewhere that's very humid you might have some issues with that now coming over to the back of the unit you've got the intake this is a second intake the front also has an intake you've got the exhaust over here and then what you have here is the connection for the battery as well as that water outlet area now let, let's show you guys how to connect this to the battery. So this part is really simple. This is like 15 pounds or so, not so bad at all. What you do is you just place it over on top and then you just clip it into place and now you have the battery attached. Now that battery is probably also 15 pounds, maybe even more than that. It's a huge battery. I mean, just by itself, 840 watt hour battery. Now, if you think about it, an electric car can actually drive like four miles with roughly 840 to 1000 watt hours. So that is that situation there. Now, we're gonna talk about one of the design flaws here as we continue, and that is how to connect the system. Now, you would expect that to be enough for the battery to be connected to this unit. However, it is not. It comes with this male-to-male 12-volt -male adapter unit that has these four prongs. And what you have to do, you have to connect the battery manually, like so, to the unit. Now, if you don't make this connection, it has this ability to screw this on so it makes a more solid connection, but I have never connected that just because of how inconvenient that is. Now, if you ask me, 
looking at this with this connection here, I really don't like having that. I think it should just plug right in and turn right on, but this is how they've decided to do it. Now, one major issue with this strategy and with this system is that you, you are not able to charge the battery and use the device at the same time. Now, the adapter that it comes with has a single plug, which you can either plug into the battery to charge the battery, which occupies that slot and doesn't allow you to connect it to the unit, or you plug it directly into the unit to power it with the 120 volts AC. Now that we have the battery connected, you got to hold down this button on the battery. It only has a single button. It makes this beeping sound, and at which point this red light turns on on the rear. Let's get you a close-up of that. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the front digital display, so why don't we hit that power button, and let's hit the fan all the way up. As you can see here, there's five blue indicators, and you can go from, this is fan speed low to high. So now it's slowly starting to fire up. As you can see, it's indicating that it's blowing out 77 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the output temperature here. That's what the light looks like. Mind you, it's super bright outside, and this does not look all that bright, but it's a good night light. It's currently on max mode. As you can see, it's quickly cooling down. Do you see it cooling down? 75. Feel it? No, it says 74, 75, 74. It was 77. Now, at this point, you could feel an air being pulled in from the, both the front as well as this part of the rear. Now, this is the exhaust, which blows really hot air out, and this is sucking in cold air as well as this portion. As you can see, we're already actually blowing 71 degrees air out and that actually feels pretty cold to me. How does that feel to you? After you turn it off, it runs for a couple more seconds. I think this is just the safety feature that they've implemented. Now why don't we go ahead and show you why we think this is a cool tool and maybe then you could decide to see if this is something that you would benefit from or not. So we're going to just put on this adapter here, which allows you to connect that vent tubing. So let's do that now. This is just a small Allen key. Now, once you make, once you have this on, just go ahead and briefly snug it in so you don't lose any air to the sides of this device. So once we show you how to, how we've been using this, we'll go ahead and walk you through exactly what we think. Now the rear is much more simple. All it does is it slides on the bottom and clips on the top. There you are, you're connected. Now, <clears throat> the way you attach the hose, now attaching the hose is simple, you just undo a piece of the tubing and just screw it in. I always forget if it's clockwise or counter. I think it's counter in this situation. There you have it. That is the exhaust tubing is on. Now let's do the intake tubing and make sure it's fully expanded. Otherwise it won't work and it just screws right on. Now all that's left is the AC output tubing. So that's on as well. And let's do the front tubing. And there you have it, you're ready to go. Now, why don't we show you how we've been placing this in the Jeep. I think it's pretty funny how we've been doing it. This actually will only work with the soft top. If you're tent camping, it's actually not that bad as well. You could figure this out. But one thing to note is that since this device generates a lot of heat, you have to have a place for it to vent that heat. Now, if you just plan on putting this as is inside of something, inside a unit, it will actually make everything warmer because not only generating exhaust, but the device itself gets hot as it's trying to cool down the air. So, you know, no energy in this world is free. When you consume energy, you generate heat. And when you try to remove heat from the air, you also generate heat. So you do want to exhaust this thing properly. Now, why don't we go ahead and show you how we've been running it. Try not to laugh, guys. We place the device right here down the middle. We grab our fresh air intake. We bring it right, or, or right over here. Pop it like that, like so. And there, there you have it. You got some fresh air intake. Now let's get our exhaust. And do the same exact thing here. And there you have it, you have exhaust. Now let's turn this bad boy on and let her rip.
Now the cool thing about this flexible hose is you're able to kind of point that air in whatever direction you would like. So if you'd like it to, you know, if, if you'd like to point it backwards, forwards to the sides, you're able to do so. Now the way we've set this thing up, it's blowing all the hot air out the passenger side of the Jeep and all the cool intake is coming in from this left side. Now, now that you've seen the way we set it up here, let's talk about other uses and how else we've used it. Outside of using it on this Jeep without air conditioning, what we do is if we want to use it somewhere else, which we have in fact, we just disconnect this tab. So we leaving leaving the hosing hose tubing in place. And we just grab it and go. Now, now that we're outside, I don't really care about the intake and exhaust ports because we're not trying to cool anything down. Outside of the vehicle, we use this thing like a, it's a personal cooler, meaning if someone is overheating outside in this really hot weather, you just get this tube and you point it at their face or you can, you know, one of those. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> and you actually get pretty cool air. What I have really appreciated is how portable this AC is. Greg and I love being outdoors. We just went off-roading. It is hot, so it's so portable and it gets very cold. If you're someone that likes the outdoors, someone that likes to bring their pets along the way, this is perfect for any outdoor adventure. Now, what we, what we really like about this as well is anytime we sit outside or if you go to an outdoor sporting event, a kid's baseball game, basketball game, anything like that, you could take this with you put this on the floor and point that hose directly at your body and it will definitely cool you off. I mean, I'm standing about four or five feet away from it here and I could already feel the breeze just being this close to it. Now, let's talk about some of the pitfalls. First, the price. You have to determine if this is worth it for you. For some, it is. For others, it isn't. Now, with one battery, this unit, the MSRP is $1,700, $1,699. I believe they have a sale going, but you know, 1700 for a battery and portable AC is pretty steep if you ask me. If you'd like the two battery version, which doubles the battery life, you could stack them onto each other. I believe it's closer to $2,000 plus tax. That's kind of a lot. The alternative to this are those evaporative coolers where you basically have a fan blowing on ice cubes. You know, not, a big, not the biggest fan of that, but this is a true air conditioner. It actually cools down the air, generates hot air and blows it away. So for that reason, I think this is a cool little device. And for the last month, it's been serving us well. But like I mentioned, it has a couple of those pitfalls. First being the price, second being the charging system, and third being that it's a personal cooler, not a space cooler. Now the website says it can cool down 25 to 40 square feet up to 10 degrees. And I don't actually believe that to be true. Where it really shines is you get that tube and you point it directly at your body and it keeps one person cold at a time it will not actually lower the temperature inside of an enclosed unit. But I could see how when we go camping, this thing is gonna be game changing for us. Now, although this air conditioning is directional because of the tubing, the front of the Jeep is pretty small. So as Greg and I are driving, we usually put this tube right in the center of both of us and it does cool down our space with our Jeep. But if you have something like a larger vehicle or semi truck, a large camper van or a large tent, don't expect it to do much without that front tube individually cooling people down. For this Jeep, this 2003 Jeep that does not come with an AC, this device in the summer is worth its weight in gold if you plan on keeping that top on. Now, if you don't have the top on, that's a totally different story. Like we have this Jeep here that we keep with its top off year round. So, you know, this has AC, but we never use it anyway. And then we have that Jeep over there that has AC and the top end. Quite honestly, the stock AC on a vehicle is way stronger than this thing, but you can't just take that AC out and take it wherever you'd like. You could take this wherever you'd like to go and it'll give you three hours of perfect AC directly to your person. So what do you think, Aline? What's your overall rating? I love it. Honestly, it gets very hot in Southern California and this Jeep we've driven without AC for a hot minute and it is quite the challenge. So this has made it definitely an enjoyable ride in that TJ. So that about wraps it up. We're going to go enjoy this weather together. Thank you guys for tuning along. I hope that I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. Prior to buying this Wrangler, we didn't actually know that portable ACs like this were a thing. If you're interested in checking out the product, the link will be in the description below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We have lots of more Jeep content to come. And thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you on the next one. Catch you. Wouldn't want to snatch hot. it. Let's see. What is it showing?
Chun, 61 degrees. It actually feels it's really, really nice. Good, it feels honestly. so nice. Look at that. See you guys later. See you guys. Vamanos. Adios.